there have been some phenomenal discoveries in our time, many of which have happened in recent years. But to say they've all been completely innocent or normal would be wrong. Some are downright unusual. From new information about King Tut's death to nanotechnology in a time that shouldn't have it, here are 15 uncomfortable and controversial finds in history. Number 15. Ancient Roman Sword Revealed We've always been told that Christopher Columbus discovered America and that he did so back in 1492. But if you were one of the kids in school who got that answer wrong on your test, here's your redemption. What we know might actually be wrong, and all because of a sword and a possible shipwreck. Researchers made their way to Oak Island, which has long been called one of the most mysterious shores in Nova Scotia. Here, they discovered a ceremonial sword and shipwreck that appeared to be Roman. If proven correct, this find could mean that thousands of years before Columbus made his way here, ancient mariners may have first. The problem is, the details about the sword are a little bit sketchy. The first reporting of the sword had never been documented. Apparently, a man and his son had been scalloping off the coast when their boat brought it up. Because shipwrecks and resultant treasure are protected in Nova Scotia, they never came forward about it and kept it. Decades later, and after the sword changed hands multiple times, the truth was finally revealed about where it had been found. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. Antarctica is so vast and so unexplored that virtually anything could be hiding in the ice that we are not aware of. Sure, we've made great leaps and bounds with our discoveries, but we're not even close to understanding half of what could be there. Which is what makes this picture look so authentic. It started circulating on the internet a short while ago, and it looks like two large spacecraft or something similar in the ice. Do you think the melting ice made these visible? Or are these two creepy things photoshopped? We'll let you be the judge. Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Child Saint Corpse Opens Eyes in the Cathedral of Guadalajara in Jalisco, Mexico, you can see the preserved remains of a child saint called Santa Innocencia or Saint Innocence. This little girl lies in a glass coffin with a lovely dress and accessories. One visitor to the cathedral decided to record his tour on video, but what he captured was terrifying. The camera pans up and down the girl where it's evident that her eyes are closed. As the camera moves away from the girl and back again, her eyes open, then close again. Many people believe the footage is fake, but the circumstances around it just seem too real, so we'll let you be the judge of whether it's real or not. But even if it's not, the story behind the girl is genuinely devastating. The most popular version of it is that a young Mexican girl named Innocencia wanted to make her first communion with her classmates. Her father forbade it. So she started studying religion and praying in secret before nuns invited her to pray with them. When her father found out, he stabbed her in the chest and ended her life. Locals took her body to a cathedral to be laid to rest as a silent witness of a small child's deep love for Christ. Number 13. Stone Egg of Lake Winnipesaukee in Meredith, New Hampshire, on Lake Winnipesaukee in 1872, a local businessman hired construction workers to carry out a job. During this job, they uncovered a strange egg-shaped stone. The businessman, Seneca A. Ladd, thought it might have been an Indian relic and kept it until his death. His daughter then donated it to the New Hampshire Historical Society in 1927. Even though it was donated to experts, the mystery still remained. It was 4 inches long, 2.5 inches wide, and featured quartzite stone, which isn't native to New Hampshire. The surface of the stone was covered in pictographs, which included arrows, a moon, a teepee, a face, spirals, and an ear of corn. 
Some researchers believe it's of Native American origin, but others think it's Celtic or Inuit. Such stones have been found in other countries, but none reported in the USA at that time. The stone also had holes bored into it with what looked like modern tools, which added even more mystery to it. Some people believe it's some kind of tool, storytelling device, or mythological thunderstone. We'll probably never know for sure. Number 12. Noah's Ark was shaped like a pyramid. What if we were to tell you that Noah's Ark was shaped like a pyramid, not like a massive boat as we've seen depicted so many times? If you were to believe the newly digitized fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls, that is actually the case. The text, which is 2,000 years old, describes Noah's Ark as a pyramid. How the scrolls were found was just dumb luck, really. About five decades ago, a shepherd threw a stone into a cave and heard what sounded like an earthenware jar cracking open. The Bedouin man went to investigate, only to discover around 800 manuscripts. About a quarter of them were copies of Hebrew Bible text. It took several years, but eventually tens of thousands of fragments of the scrolls were scanned with a custom-made camera. The previously illegible text was made legible, which means we now have new interpretations of many biblical stories we know today. Some of the fragments described the ark's ribs being gathered at the top, which would describe a pyramid shape. Greek translations of the Bible from around the 3rd century BC also mention a similar description. Number 11. Atacama Alien Skeleton In 2003, a six-inch humanoid in white cloth with violet ribbon was found in an abandoned mining town in the Atacama Desert in Chile. The skeleton was so out of this world that it was sold to a private collector in Spain and appeared in a documentary as supposed proof of alien life. But because we have the technology, we can prove and deny so much more than ever before. And on the subject of whether the skeleton is alien or not, it's not. Instead, the story is much more tragic. DNA was extracted from the bones to reveal that she was a baby girl who would have been stillborn or died immediately after birth. She had extreme congenital disabilities and mutations that made her skeleton look the way it does. She was only six inches tall, but her bones had many of the features you would find on children as old as eight. She also had just 10 pairs of ribs, when most of us have 12 pairs. As you can probably tell from the photo, her head wasn't what you would typically see either. It had an unusual, elongated shape. Microbiology and immunology professor Gary Nolan studied the skeleton and offered a diagnosis. She may have had a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, which means her diaphragm hadn't developed properly. Number 10. Bouvet Island Isolated, faraway islands sound like ideal holiday destinations, don't they? That might be true of Fiji, Hawaii, and even New Zealand, but definitely not of Bouvet Island. You would easily describe it as the most isolated island in the world. In fact, the nearest landmass is Antarctica's coast, 1,750 kilometers away. Even though that does sound pretty appealing, the weather is awful. There are storms 300 days of the year, and it's basically one big uninhabitable island with glaciers, gale force winds, and permanent sea fog. Being able to survive there comfortably would be next to impossible. Which brings us to our next point. How did a lifeboat end up there with no signs of life? For several decades, groups of people have been making their way to the island to study it and consider its suitability for a weather station. It was during one of those trips in the 1960s that the boat was discovered. It was found abandoned in a small lagoon with fur seals around it. It also appeared to be seaworthy, even if the water surrounding the island is too unforgiving for such a small boat. Near the boat lay a pair of oars, a buoyancy tank, pieces of wood, and a 44-gallon drum. To this day, no one actually knows where it came from, especially since the nearest trade route was over 1,000 miles away. Number 9. A Controversial Cave 
Archaeologists have always thought that the Clovis people, big game hunters, were the first residents of the Americas. They were known for their incredibly well-crafted spear points and supposedly crossed a land bridge from Asia to Alaska 13,000 years ago. But that might not be right, and researchers are losing their minds about it. Stone tools found in a cave in Mexico could indicate that humans lived in the Americas up to 33,000 years ago. Around 1,900 tools were found in Chicoite Cave in Mexico, with radiocarbon dating used to determine the age of bone and charcoal surrounding them. There were around 200 tools embedded in Earth that dated back 33,150 years ago. Some tools were also found in layers from about 13,000 years ago. We're pretty familiar with what tools made by Clovis people look like, and these looked nothing like them, or any other stone tools we've found so far in the Americas. Instead, the stone tools have small flakes and small blades used for cutting. They also found square stone fragments that were being used to make tools. Number 8. Ancient Cup Made With Nanotechnology who knew that a simple Roman chalice from 1,600 years ago could be so advanced with technology to the point where it could help us further such technology today? Okay, allow me to explain. The British Museum is home to a glass chalice called the Lycurgus Cup because it has a scene on it involving King Lycurgus of Thrace. It has sat in the museum for several decades, puzzling experts for equally as long. When the cup is lit from the front, it appears jade green. If you light it from the back, it's blood red. It wasn't until 1990 that researchers finally realized what was going on. They looked at small, broken fragments under a microscope and found that Roman artisans were incredibly clever people. In fact, they were nanotechnology pioneers. They had managed to impregnate the glass chalice with silver and gold particles around 50 nanometers in diameter. That's less than a thousandth of a grain of salt. The mixture of the materials was so precise and so accurate that it was clear they knew what they were doing. Number 7. Shroud of Turin the Holy Shroud, or Shroud of Turin, is a piece of linen cloth that has a negative image of a man on it. Some people believe it's Jesus of Nazareth, and that the shroud was what he was wrapped in after crucifixion. The shroud has had its fair share of controversy over the years. It was first mentioned in 1354, then denounced by a bishop in 1389 as a fake. The Catholic Church has a hazier view. They neither endorse nor reject it, but Pope Francis said it's the icon of a man and scourged and crucified. Since 1578, it has remained in the Royal Chapel of Northern Italy's Cathedral of Turin. When radiocarbon dating took place in 1988, it was found that it dated back to between 1260 and 1390, putting many theories to bed. As much as people want to think it's related to Jesus of Nazareth, it's not. Even though people try and dispute the evidence by saying it was a medieval repair, contaminated, or had been affected by carbon dioxide. Even with almost conclusive proof, it's still an enormously controversial strip of cloth. Number 6. The Williams Enigma Lith if you've ever heard about prehistoric objects being found where they had no business being found, such as being out of odds with their surroundings, then you might have heard them referred to as Uparts. Uparts, or out-of-place artifacts, are essentially items that shouldn't exist. They frustrate scientists who can never come to a conclusion about them, but they're a source of excitement for investigators who like to come up with some wild theories. One item that definitely fits into this category is the Williams Enigma Lith. John J. Williams, an electrical engineer, found what he believed was an electrical connector sticking out of the ground in a rural North American location in 1998. He refuses to identify that location even today. When he started digging, he found a perfectly formed rock with what looked exactly like a three-pronged plug embedded into it. He called it an enigmalith, a combination of an enigma and monolith, and it remains a mystery. The solid granite stone is untampered, but x-rays show that there is an opaque structure inside. It doesn't seem to be made out of wood, metal, rubber, or any other material we have today. We still have no answers. Number 5. The Copper Scroll with Clues 
You may remember an earlier story about a whole bunch of scrolls being found that could change how we view Noah's Ark. Well, all of those scripts were written on papyrus or parchment, except for one. This one, found in Cave 3 near Kirbet Qumran, was written on metal, a mixture of copper with tin. The scroll was separated into two sections, with the original single scroll measuring around 8 feet long. Instead of it featuring literary work like all the others, it listed 64 different places where gold and silver had been hidden or buried. All of the other scrolls were written in the form of literary Hebrew, but this one was closer to Mishnah Hebrew. So are we just going to ignore the fact that the scroll was basically a treasure hunt? Of course not. Researchers believe the treasure could be from the Jewish temple, and most likely the second temple. However, there are so many other theories. Some people think it comes from the Qumran community or the first temple, but we're not going to find out because we've never found the treasure. Well, that's a disappointing ending. I'm sorry. Number 4. Fossilized Feces when you're an archaeologist, you probably dream of digging up the oldest ever piece of pottery or even a treasure chest filled with ancient jewels. But archaeologists from the York Archaeological Trust had to settle for poo. Or, to be more specific, Lloyd's Bank Coprolite. That's a fancy name for dung if we ever did hear one. The large, fossilized poo was found in the Viking settlement of Jorvik, now called York, in England. It was discovered in 1972 under what is now the York branch of Lloyd's Bank and is thought to be the largest example of fossilized human poo ever discovered. It was 8 inches long, 2 inches wide, and the most horrific looking poo you've probably ever laid eyes on. Some poor guy had to analyze it and they discovered that whoever it belonged to ate mainly bread and meat. They also desperately needed a worming tablet because it contained several hundred parasitic eggs that pointed towards the poop's owner having intestinal worms. So how did the poo get fossilized? Well, it was preserved by moist and peaty soil along with timber, leather, and textiles. Number 3. New Telescope Caught Invisible Terrestrial Entities If this doesn't send shivers up your spine, I'll eat my hat. Dr. Ruggero Santilli developed a new kind of telescope that could observe antimatter light. With it, he was able to see entities in our terrestrial environment that are invisible to the human eye. But that's not even the spookiest part. Dr. Santilli said the entities appeared to move intelligently, which suggested that they had been performing unauthorized surveillance of Tampa Bay, Florida. Dr. Santilli aimed the telescope at the night sky over Tampa Bay at 9.30 p.m. on September 5th, 2015. He wasn't looking for terrestrial entities, he was looking for antimatter galaxies. But instead, he saw entities move into the screen of the camera. They are invisible to human eyes and to optical instruments that have convex lenses. The telescope has concave lenses. After Dr. Santilli carried out further tests and observations, he identified two different types of invisible terrestrial entities. The second type was pulsating and moving systematically backward and forward. He suggested that unauthorized surveillance was taking place and confirmed the need for reviews of civilian, industrial, and military installations. Number 2. King Tut's Death British archaeologist Howard Carter was the man responsible for opening the tomb belonging to King Tutankhamun in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt in 1923. From that point onward, everyone was curious about King Tut, who ruled 3,300 years ago, and what caused his death at the tender age of 19. <laughs> In 1923, it was impossible to find out those answers, but the technology we have today is simply incredible, so now we can attempt to. DNA tests and computerized tomography exams revealed that King Tut suffered from malaria and a fractured lower leg. But those were the least of his worries. He also had congenital deformities which were associated with inbreeding. That was surprisingly common among Egyptian royalty. But there is still more to come. CT scans revealed King Tut had a long head, a cleft palate, a curved spine, and his upper vertebrae were fused. These were all signs pointing to Marfan syndrome, even though DNA tests provided a negative result. 
Other researchers speculate that he died in a chariot crash, which would explain the broken leg, or maybe even blood poisoning or infection. Further evidence showed he had trauma to his left torso and side, which would support the chariot collision theory. So there is plenty to work with. Number 1. The Lost Civilization of Sangsen Dewey while repairing a sewage ditch 24 miles from Chengdu, a peasant in the Sichuan province of China uncovered jade and stone artifacts. That might not have seemed significant, and it wasn't really thought about again until 1986. Then, archaeologists discovered two pits containing Bronze Age treasures like jade, elephant tusks, and eight-foot-tall bronze sculptures. It was determined that they had come from a lost civilization called Sangxin Dui, which is a walled city positioned on the Minjiang River banks. Now, it's looking like the inhabitants of that city may have left willfully up to 3,000 years ago. Later, archaeologists found more remains of another city called Jinsha, which is also near Chengdu. Some of the artifacts looked similar to those found at Sangxingdui, so some scholars believe that people from Sangxingdui may have moved to Jinsha. But why? Why did everyone just up and leave? It might have been an earthquake. That earthquake could have caused a landslide that dammed the river high in the mountains that rerouted to Jinsha. Without a water supply, they may have decided to move to the city. Some of these definitely had me scratching my head. What's more concerning is the fact that the more technology we have, the more crazy discoveries we'll make. Which of these stories weirded you out the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.